Um, this is a very common challenge, and yet when the person has it, they think they're the only person on the planet with the challenge, and that is, how do I get over an X? And we all know it can become such a, a weight around the neck. Yeah, every single thing that you do is, is, is penetrated by this heaviness of just constantly thinking about that X and you know, feeling envy or jealousy or, um, or grief or whatever you feel, the whole gamut of emotions of what happens. But it's important that we understand that what happens when we have a breakup and we are feeling a lot of agony afterward is that what we're number one doing is that we're saying that the situation that I have is better than any situation that I can have. So we're afraid to look forward because we think that we're going to be lonely. And when we think we're going to be lonely, what we're actually looking at is we're looking at a version of ourselves where we don't think we're worthy of having an intimate relationship where we are not lonely in that relationship or that being alone would not be a lonely situation. So what it all comes down to is it does come down to amping up your self-love in a way that maybe you haven't before and saying that I, I know that there were probably some things about this relationship that were not beneficial to me. Determine what they were. You don't necessarily have to take the relationship and say it was perfect because if you're not in it, it probably wasn't perfect. For whatever reason you broke up, there was probably a divide or a red flag or a miss on some level. If there wasn't a miss on some level, then probably you would be together, okay? So look and say, what was it about this relationship that wasn't right for me? Even if I missed that person, what about this relationship wasn't right for me? Because that can help you to see that the potentiality of your next relationship can actually parallel you more with happiness and more with being in, in a mutually beneficial experience. Um, so those are some of the things. The other thing is uh, there is a form of grief when you break up, but grief when you break up is different than grief of when someone returns home. When someone returns home and they leave their body, you if you want to look at pictures and you want to go through things, there could be something wonderful about having all of that stuff around. If it's allowing you to experience a sense of letting go or letting you know that their energy and their effect on your life is still present. When it's an X, please don't immerse yourself in staring at the relationship. Okay. It's not, helpful it's just not helpful uh, i see this over and over again with social media now where people are constantly looking at their insta page or their facebook page or their this feed or their that and seeing what they're doing and interpreting who's in the picture or where they are when they should be there on a tuesday where they have objects that they don't let go of that are in their bedroom or they're rereading letters or they're reading the texts of the breakup over and over and over again to a friend wait did i tell you that he also said uh, when you constantly stay re-immersed in that relationship you can't move on let it go let it go i'm i'm i don't like cruelty. So I'm not saying that if you two broke up and you're staying friends on social media, that you should block them because that feels cruel to me. That feels, that feels actually, there's a form of violence in that. Okay. But what you can do is you can, you can block seeing that person. You don't have to cut them out, but block seeing them so they don't come in your feed or that they don't come in your whatever. You can do that. Or if you have a little bit more courage, then do the dignified thing and say, um, I'm, I just wanted you to know that what's best for me moving on, and I don't mean this to be unkind at all, is that I'm, I'm going to unfriend you. But it has nothing to do with the fact that I wish you the best forever. It's just more helpful for me to not have reminders I'm trying to move on you can actually stand up and do the courageous thing and let somebody's aspect or presence in your life go like that 
But the most important thing to do is to get yourself out of the way to the point that you're remembering that life is good and you are worthy and that there are lots of soulmates out there for every single person on the planet. Um, and when you love yourself, you will always magnetize in a person who also loves themselves. And that's the best kind of relationship to be in. The most mutually beneficial relationships are between two people that love themselves, respect themselves, therefore can love you and respect you.